hey, wait a minute, I hear you say, well, how, when did he draw that? <laughs> well, I did drew that in another video, which you can see here. I'll put the links at the end uh, or in the comments box below. Now I'm gonna start this by doing a kind of a, a drop shadow. And what I'm doing is painting the paper with clear, fresh water. So I'm basically soaking the paper and I'm going right around the outside of the design like that. And then I'm going to do the same on the inside like that. So the actual heart shape stays dry and the outside bits of it get wet. And this is going to depend an awful lot on the kind of paper that you're using. I'm often asked what paper I use. This is actually stuff called CS2, which you just can't get anymore. <laughs> I bought a big pack of it. I don't know what I'll do when I run out. Part of the fun of watercolour is sort of trying different things out and trying different um, papers and things like that. Now, what I'm doing here, I'm using a colour here. This is called Neutral Tint, made by Winsor & Newton. And you might get that. You can choose, you can mix up any old colour you like, really. You could use Payne's Grey is probably another colour that would be fairly similar. And then I'm just going to kind of flood that in around the edge like that. And then I'm going to kind of dry it off my brush. And then I'm just going to kind of work this in. So what's happening is that the, uh, the colour is kind of leaching into the, the paper where it's damp. I think we can maybe still do a bit more. So you have to kind of work this. If you work it too much, you might start kind of tearing the paper into bits. I'm kind of roughing up the surface of the paper. And I'm going to do the same on the inside like this. And this might look a bit weird. How's that looking in the camera? I'm just looking in the camera. And it's kind of looking quite soft. And it's a really soft drop shadow. So it kind of lifts the the design off the page makes it sort of float a bit. What I want to do is get this dry. So I'm going to use a hairdryer. If you haven't got a hairdryer, it doesn't matter. Just go and make a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, go, go walk around the block, come back and it'll be nice and dry. Okay, so what we have now is this lovely, lovely soft shadow. And I'm going to get this red, which is kind of vermilion. Thick. Right, so what we're going to do is work on one kind of strand of the heart at a time. And this is a bit like what we did with the previous, where we put kind of clean water on the page. Except this time we're putting kind of pinky red water on the page. And that will come to about there. And then I'm going to come down here. So like I said, we want to do one strand at a time. And then I'm going to join these together with some clean water. Like that. I suppose I should have put some clean water in between first. That would have made it even better actually because this is not gonna okay now i'm getting some getting a darker richer red in there now and we want to kind of flood that into each end like that and like we did before Just keep getting clean water on your brush. Keep dib dabbing into the. Have a little jam jar of water there, and just keep dib dabbing away. And you can work this pattern like that. So you can see it's sort of starting dark and coming around and getting dark again around the corner there. So in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this one here now, and I'm going to put a splash of kind of thinner water there and then we'll get that original red like that and then we 
can kind of flood that in there. I think watercolour does take a little bit of experience, but this is a good little thing to practice on because it's it's kind of kind of simple and yet very complicated. <laughs> and we're only using kind of one colour, so it's actually a good exercise in in sort of tonality, I suppose, isn't it? And then so again, and oh, keep and keep washing out my brush, and then sort of you can dry it on a tissue or a kitchen towel. And then just work it up into that clean water area like that. And now I want to get that dry. So I'm going to get my hair dryer out again. Okay, so I'll work up at the top here so I'm not dragging on there. And then we're going to make that a bit damp there with clean water. I'm going to come back here and we're going to get red like that. We'll start at each end like that. Then that's kind of hitting the fresh water there. If you're wondering about that, you know, quite how I drew it, you know, you can do it all sorts of ways. So if you could have drawn it like I show in the video, but also in the in the drawing video, I show you how to trace it as well. So sometimes it's quite good to to get it right, get a um, get one version of it really, really right. And then you can trace that down to, to do the painting on it. So I cleaned out my brush there to do that. And then I'm going to get some more. So I want this to be quite dark here. Around there and then around the top. And I'm cleaning my brush. <laughs> you can hear it in the jam jar so like we did before i think i'm going to have this really quite pale down here so we're going to wash this out and i think can you see here it's gone over the edge a bit it's kind of gone a bit bleeding over the edge so i'm just working that gray away with a brush and then i'm going to dab it like that with kitchen towel again just to kind of work away the in fact I can see the little splash of grey has got in there as well. Now <laughs> so I'm getting that kind of wet there. And we're gonna start all the way around here. And start thinning it out. And I'm leaving a little line there, which is okay. The little bit there, which hasn't got paint on it, which is fine because that will kind of give a little highlight on the edge. Gives a little bit of extra to the whole thing. And I could do that again just on the edge there. This is such a weird kind of shape that it's the um, the light and the shade and reflections and things are all actually in the wrong places. <laughs> but they work because we're trying to kind of 
make m draw your eye into different areas so and then I want that darker up there. And we kind of pull the colour into that bleeding area. <laughs> Think of this colour as sort of bleeding into into the damp paper area. And then I'll clean my brush again and drag this colour down. Clean the brush again. No, there we go. When you are sure that it is absolutely dry, you can maybe erase some of those pencil marks if you really want to. So basically, there you are. It's got a kind of a lover's knot look to it, hasn't it? If you wanted bit more you could always add on some extra with colored pencils and just kind of sharpen up those edges well if you're in the mood for love go and have a look at this other video with 78 ideas for valentine's drawings yes 78 can you believe it <laughs> or just try the mystery drawing Make sure you're subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Drawing Channel and why not go and get my ebook, Everyone Can Draw. Uh, in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, 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 and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye. <laughs>